Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name's Jack and this is the Mindful Homestead. If you're new to the channel, you may not know that I work at a feed store and every year around this time, spring, actually, check this out. That's the first crocus I've seen open up this spring so far. So every year right around this time, at the feed store I work at, we begin selling chicks. As part of that, there's a whole bunch of people who come in that are new to chicken ownership or duck ownership or new to the ownership of fowl. And they have a whole lot of questions. I just, I just noticed looking behind me that the chairs are strewn all across the yard. They were around the fire pit the other night. I don't know if we got a strong wind that came through or if Emma's working on some art installation. So anyway, so all these folks that are new to the world of chickens and ducks come into the store and they are looking to purchase their first flock. And they have questions and I'm happy to answer those questions, but I've noticed that there are a few questions that get asked a lot, leading me to believe that there may be a few myths floating around this chicken world that, um, that I'm gonna address in today's video. Myth number one, it's gonna be cheaper to raise chickens for eggs at home than it is to buy eggs at the store. And honestly, that couldn't be further from the truth. You see, if you're a new chicken owner, you've got a whole bunch of infrastructure you need to figure out. You need to figure out a coop, you need to figure out waters, you need to figure out feeders, some form of protection around them. That could be your coop, it could be an enclosed run, it could be electric fencing like we have. You've got all that money to invest up front into your chickens to take proper care of them. And then you've got your feed. What not a lot of people think about is when you're buying eggs from the store, Odds are those chickens were raised by farmers that were at a much larger scale than you'll ever be. So even if you take out all the infrastructure of getting started with chickens, you're still not going to be able to compete with the price at which they buy their chicks, they buy their feed, uh, they buy their waters, they buy their equipment that they need. Just because they're doing it on a much larger scale, you're not gonna be able to compete with them on the cost of eggs. And some people are probably gonna say, well, I'm just gonna let my chickens free range. I'm gonna let them run around. They're gonna find their own bugs. They're gonna find their own things to eat. But really you still need to be providing your chickens a bare minimum amount of grain and feed that they need to lay healthy eggs for you and your family. Even with around 50 birds, and I say around 50, cause even at this point, I don't know how many birds we have. We're not breaking even. We're maybe breaking even at four bucks a dozen. We're probably breaking even on eggs when we factor in cost of feed and other stuff. What I can say though, is that the eggs that you get from your backyard chickens, while maybe costing a little bit more, are gonna be fresher, they're gonna taste better, and they're gonna be more nutritious for you than the ones that you get in the store that have been sitting on the shelf for up to a month or month and a half. Myth number two, you need roosters to get eggs from your backyard chickens. If you have a good rooster, I'm all for it. Keep that rooster. And a lot of people don't get chickens because they think you need to have a rooster, a male chicken, to get eggs from your hens, your female chickens. And the truth is, that's simply not true. Your hens are gonna lay eggs regardless of whether or not you have a rooster in your flock. So if you happen to live in an area where you're not allowed to have roosters, don't worry, you can still have backyard chickens and get eggs from your chickens, no problem. Myth number three, chickens are loud. Another myth I hear pretty frequently is that I can't have chickens because chickens are loud. And aside from the odd crowing rooster, which is kind of loud. <coughs> you can see behind me that our females are not really making that much noise. There's some clucks and some putts and some purrs, but there's not a ton of loud noise associated with keeping hens. You will have what we call the egg song here and there, which is if a chicken is getting ready to lay an egg, you might hear a loud noise that, you know, is just them kind of singing. <laughs> but 
But other than that egg song, which really only happens in the morning when they're laying their eggs, they're pretty quiet. If you had neighbors that lived, you know, 50 to 100 feet away from you, they would be hard pressed to know that you had chickens from the sound aspect of it. Probably the only way they'd know you have chickens is because you're gonna be bringing them fresh eggs once a week. And they'll know there's a difference there. Myth number four, brown chickens will lay brown eggs. I don't really know where this myth came from, but I think the best way to talk about it would be for me to actually grab the egg bucket I just collected and bring it back over here. At some point I realized the people coming into the store to buy chickens were thinking that the color of the chicken, and not just necessarily the chicken, but maybe the color of the feathers or the color of the legs or the color of the beak had something to do with the color of the eggs that that chicken laid. And I'm here to tell you just patently false, not true. This egg here, this blue, I don't know if you can tell on camera, uh, this blue egg right here is laid by one of our Easter eggers who most of them are tan chickens with black flecking all over them. This big brown egg here was laid by, and that's a darker brown, this was laid by one of our Midnight Morans, which you can see are all black chickens. And then we have this white egg here. This white egg was laid by one of our, well, this is a bad example. This was probably laid by a legern, which is a white chicken. Your kind of stereotypical white chicken red comb. However, we do have a chicken named Sassy. She's one of our original four chickens that we brought onto the homestead and she is an all gray chicken with a red comb and she lays a white egg. So while people may tell you that you can tell the color that a chicken is going to lay by the color of the chicken or the color of their legs or beak or whatever, simply not true. The only way to know what color a chicken is going to lay is to know the genetics of that chicken. For instance, certain breeds will lay certain color eggs. Bard Rocks will lay brown eggs, Ligerns will lay white eggs. If you get a breed like a true blue or something like that, they will lay blue eggs. But then you can start crossing things. If you want chickens that lay green eggs, you can cross a parent that lays a brown egg with a parent that lays a blue egg, and you'll get a chicken that lays a green egg when it's hatched. The coloring of a chicken's egg is a genetic trait that's passed down from its parents. So when you're looking at chickens in the store, thinking of picking them up, don't necessarily just look at the colors of the chickens. It is nice to have a colorful backyard flock, but that's not necessarily gonna represent the color of the eggs that you're gonna be getting from those chickens. Myth number five, all breeds of chickens are kind of the same. This last one's a little bit tricky because it is true that if you go back far enough, all chickens came from a single ancestor. They were essentially bred from jungle fowl, birds that looked like chickens that lived in the woods, on the ground, that didn't really fly, except maybe up to roost. And we've bred those birds down to the different breeds that you see today. However, people come into the store and they have this notion that uh, all chickens will lay eggs, you can eat all chickens. Um, and just like dogs, pet dogs or cats, there are different breeds and they're all good at different things. They all have different body types. It's not just buy some chickens, get some eggs or buy some chickens, get some meat. For instance, if you look at just the few chickens that we've got milling about right now, you'll see three very different even types of egg layers. That white one over there, that's a Leghorn. That is a very scrawny chicken, but it lays tons of eggs. If you buy white eggs in the store, that's where your eggs are coming from. If you see the black, and then the black and white chicken right there, that is a uh, Mystic Moran's is the black one, and then a Silver Laced Wyandotte is the black and white one. Those are what I would consider dual purpose breeds. They'll lay a fair bit of eggs. They're a slightly heavier bodied bird as well and you could process them for meat if you wanted to. The Easter egg right there, the tan one with the black tail, that is a chicken that was bred basically for its egg color. That lays either a green or a blue or some sort of pretty colored egg. The ducks are very excited about the water. And she's there really, she'll lay eggs, a decent amount of eggs. She'll lay a pretty egg, but, uh, but if we had to process her for meat, she wouldn't really be the best choice. On the flip side, you do have breeds that are bred specifically for providing meat. In the past, we've raised Cornish crosses personally, and that's what we like to raise. But you also have breeds like 
color yields and red rangers and red broilers. There are a bunch of other options out there for meat birds that aren't bred for laying eggs. Some of them will if you let them get old enough. Even Cornish crosses, if you keep them alive, you know, past six, seven, eight months, they will lay eggs, I'm told. But typically those birds are bred to put on a lot of weight. They're bred for feed conversion to turn all that feed that you give them into meat. And, you know, they start having health issues that pop up, you know, around, around four months old, usually. So don't just think that because you're getting chickens, you're getting the right chickens for what you're looking to do. If you're looking to raise meat, make sure that the chickens you're getting are for meat. If you are looking to get chickens for eggs, uh, you know, whether it be a high production layer or a pretty layer, may just make sure the breed that you're getting is one that is gonna work out well with what your plans are. Otherwise you'll be disappointed. And while it's hard to be disappointed around chickens, it does happen. If you found this video informative and you want to see more about what we're doing here on our homestead, make sure to click that subscribe button down below. We do have a Patreon that we don't really pump up too much, but if you're looking to get some of the things that we raise here on the farm and you want to support us a little bit, we definitely would appreciate that as well. The link's down in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope you're having a great day. Bye.